this is Dan Sullivan speaking. I happen to be the RVP uh, for the Eastern Region for Conducive Technologies and appreciate you taking the time out today to join us and, and learn how our patented IO reduction software can help uh, improve SQL performance uh, up to 2x, if not even greater, which is what many customers are realizing from using our patented IO reduction software. Uh, so excited to share that with you today. Uh, I also have a, another guest joining us today, and that is Gary Kwan, uh, otherwise known as GQ. Gary's our Senior Vice President of Technology Strategy, and exciting to have Gary uh, join us here today. GQ, you out there? Dan, I am, and I'm glad to be here. And don't let Dan fool you, even though he's uh, in charge of sales, he's very he's very technical savvy there, and I'm just here to handle the deep dive questions. But one thing we I like to point out, Dan, is that we like to make these sessions very interactive. So if you have a question during the session or at the very end, just pop it into the uh, question box over there and we'll get a, get to it during the session or at the very end. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, thank you, GQ. And uh, again, folks, historically, we've had a lot of great questions, uh, you know, asked of us during during these uh, webinars. So, so please don't hesitate, no question's a bad one. Uh, and we look forward to the back and forth discussion. Uh, also, um, for attending the seminar today or the webinar, you'll be receiving um, a not for resale NFR copy of our Velocity uh, IO reduction software, a per server license. So we're excited about uh, being able to deliver that to you at the end of the webinar. And we'll talk more about that uh, as we get uh, closer to the end of our discussion. So with that, uh, I just wanted to share with you a little bit about who we are. Um, we used to be the Disk Keeper Corporation. You may know us from our past. We were the world's preeminent disk defragmentation software provider. Been in business over 38 years. And, and GQ, how many of those 38 have you been part of uh, Conducive slash Disk Keeper? Showing my age, Dan. Oh, about 36 of them. So I've been here for a while. Uh, mainly in the R&D area. That's really impressive, GQ. And uh, uh, he started as a very uh, young uh, young child. So it's <laughs> nice to have you here. Uh, thanks. But again, we're the 12th oldest software company in the world, folks. You may not have, have even been aware of that. Uh, but we rebranded the company back in 2012 because uh, the world uh, virtualization came on the scene and you no longer defragged a SAN or an SSD. So GQ and his team totally respun our, saw, our patented software to where today we are now two light filter drivers that sit in the Windows OS. And we'll talk more about them a little bit later on here uh, during the presentation. But it, those two filter drivers prevent fragmentation from occurring in the Windows OS. And that's one of them. The second one is a patented caching engine that learns your applications and actually understands what are performance robbing read IOs and puts them into idle and available DRAM, uh, like our caching engine, that then provides a memory to memory transfer of that information to your application, speeds that are 10 times faster than flash. And, and because of that, on average, we reduce about 30% of IO to backend storage which our customers have been seeing application performance improvements anywhere from 50 to 300%. Pretty amazing, and, and we'll share those results with you. Because of that, Gartner named us a cool vendor and said we should be installed in every virtualized initiative. Storage Magazine named a storage software product of the year. I talked about the, cache, the patented caching engine. It's actually OEM by the folks you see here, HP, Lenovo, SanDisk, Actually, nine of the 10 top PC manufacturers OEM our patented caching engine and put it into their workbooks and some of their laptops because it's much more efficient and lightweight than any of the caching engines they've even developed. And so again, we'll talk about it later, but pretty impressive there. And because of what we do in a Microsoft environment, we've been a close partner with Microsoft. They actually uh, originally had OEM'd 
uh, some of our uh, fragmentation software, defragmentation software and put it into Windows. We didn't give them everything, but that's how close we are with Microsoft. Because of what we do in virtualized environments, we're a close partner with VMware. We recently certified with Citrix as, as a Citrix Ready partner, and you'll see the results of that briefly. And important to this conversation is we've also certified under this Microsoft SQL Server I.O. Reliability Certification. This is a certification that GQ and his team worked on, so I'm going to turn it over to GQ to talk about this briefly. GQ. And this is a nice elite certification, Dan. Microsoft has certain certification to make sure that third-party vendors' software, such as ours, are fully compatible and reliable with their product, in this case, SQL Server. Not only did we have to go through some stringent testing, but also had to face a uh, a group of SQL experts to make sure that we're fully compatible. Now, I want to note that we're the only software vendor to get this certification, but we're in good company with people like Dell, HP, EMC. So, Dan, this was a, uh, it just shows how well we work with Microsoft here. Oh, that's great, GQ. Congratulations on that. And, and also, if, if I'm correct, you actually did the certification in Azure. Is that correct? That is correct. So uh, just to show you, we're not only on physical on-premise, but out on the cloud too. Yep, that's pretty pretty impressive. So thanks thanks for your efforts there, GQ. So folks, that's really all I'm going to spend uh, about the, about the company today. Uh, but did want to share with you too uh, some results of a survey that we've been doing on an annual basis relative to a variety of different questions. And this one happens to do with slow SQL Server performance. So in, the, in this case, we actually had 28% of the respondents say that they're having issues with performance on SQL servers. And believe it or not, this percentage has actually been growing over the years, not going the other way, which is really quite interesting given some of the benefits to storage technology, but we're gonna show you why that is most probably the case here and how we solve that. So I wanted to share with you the results of that survey. And also we have a word map of, of all of the different uh, attributes that are responded to in that survey. And you can see there smack dab in the middle is, is the largest mention uh, of of any type of application uh, that be, can, can be problematic uh, within a customer's organization. And believe it or not, seven of our 10, seven out of 10 of our new customers buy us initially to help improve SQL performance. And once they accomplish that, they then go and extend us across all the other Microsoft applications that they have. Because we are a horizontal application, we happen to drive a lot of benefit for SQL, which is it can be pretty uh, obvious to folks, but then they take us and put us throughout their organization. So I mentioned Citrix and just wanted to share this with you briefly. Um, so it's not just SQL, again, it's all Microsoft-based applications. But in our testing, the testing that GQ and his team uh, went through to become a Citrix Ready partner, you can see the results here of before and after having Velocity enabled during the testing. And the performance improvements moved, ran from 11 to 90%. So there are different improvements depending on the read-write ratios, et cetera. But you can see a significant uh, improvement in performance here on Citrix-based workloads. So again, just wanted to share that with you. And again, GQ, congratulations to you and your team uh, in that regard. Thanks, Dan. So folks, what I'm showing here is the most efficient IO environment possible. And you all know and have experienced that, that while virtualization has been great for server efficiency, it's actually been horrendous for IO performance. Because what you'd like to see here in the, this most efficient environment possible are large contiguous writes emanating out of the Windows OS, hitting the hypervisor, moving down to storage, and back again. Most efficient I.O. environment possible. But as soon as you virtualize, and even in a physical environment with the Windows I.O. tax, these two inefficiencies enter into the fray. The Windows I.O. tax and the I.O. blender effect. And GQ, you want to chat a little bit about these two inefficiencies and what happens? Be glad to, Dan. Now you think, why is this happening? Uh, well, it's actually 
the Windows file system because when a file gets created or extended, the Windows system doesn't know how big that creation or extension is going to be. So it looks for the first logical free space to put that in. And if it's not big enough, well, it has to go find another one and each and so on and so on. And each of those is going to be an extra IO, which we call the IO tax. Of course, then when you multiply that by all the different VMs going down to the hypervisor, you then see all these small little random IOs coming to the hypervisor and they get scattered and they get this term that Gartner helped us term called the IO blender effect. And that causes more disruption and extra processing time. Now, not only does you can see that you have to process all the extra IOs, but it's also you're, you're not taking uh, advantage of your storage. Whenever you buy storage, whether it's hard disk drives or all flash arrays, they give you two benchmarks, random IOs and sequential IOs. And you'll notice that the sequential IOs always outperform the random IOs. So if you're, if you're getting all these random IOs, you're not taking full advantage of your storage. Now, in a few slides, uh, we're, we're going to tell you how we uh, fix this, but that's the problem right there, Dan. Yep, thanks, GQ. So in this situation, again, folks, this is true of any virtualized environment. And again, even in a physical environment, the Windows IO tax breaks up these nice, large, contiguous writes into these small, tiny, random fragments. But in this case, in this virtualized environment, if you went to write a gigabyte of data here, it might take you 100,000 IOs to do that. In this case, with our software installed, it may take only 50 or 60,000 IOs. So you can appreciate what that might mean around application performance improvement uh, and headroom reduction in your environment, giving you the ability to add more applications to that existing environment, or just improving SQL performance by reducing the amount of IO to backend storage. And it doesn't matter what storage is here in the backend, hyperconverged, all flash, a combination, it's having to deal with all of the small, tiny, random fragments. By the way, Flash doesn't like random I.O., as GQ kind of mentioned, versus if your environment looked like this. So by the way, uh, I'd even invite you to Google the I.O. blender effect because you'll see the definition there about reducing storage performance and increasing latency. And also our best practice is to install on all the VMs on a particular host. And this is just depicting what's, what happens if you don't. Because we can optimize one or two or however many VMs on a particular host or in an environment. But as you can see, the other VMs that are not optimized are still generating that small, tiny, random uh, IO, which again gets further randomized by the hypervisor and again degrades the performance improvements that you're getting on that single or few VMs that you have installed this on to provide the optimization and the improvement in performance that you're looking for. So best practice, install on all the VMs. And oh, by the way, we have a, our licensing is offered on a host or a per server basis. And by a host license, I mean that all of the VMs on a particular host 5, 10, 15, 20 um, are all able to install Velocity based on that single host license. So where do we sit, folks? We're this orange stripe here up in the Windows OS. So we install on the VM, uh, not on the hypervisor, but on each VM. And so we're above everything in your environment. If it's compatible with Windows, it's compatible with us. It doesn't matter what hypervisor you have installed, what host servers are involved, HBAs, what your network is, or what the storage is. We're there providing the best IO optimization possible to let your fast environment run even faster. So in essence, we take half the cars off the highway at rush hour 
pack the remaining cars full of people and put them in an HOV lane that really works. So this tries to depict actually where it is we sit in your environment. GQ, any comments? No, Dan, you know, basically uh, we're still a Windows I.O. But basically you might say we're an optimized Windows I.O. So if if that software or hardware worked with the Windows I.O.s before, it still got to work with us. We're fully agnostic to the type of hardware or software being used out there. So thanks, Dan. Yep. And folks, you'll see that it's not us really doing the work. It's still Windows and NTFS that are doing all the work. We're really a personal trainer, if you will, to Windows. Uh, we're the intelligence that Windows NTFS designed 30 plus years ago never got. And so, Dan, I, I do see a ghost who asked, uh, does this effect happens for VMDK files or RDM delivery disks? And Augusto, it does. Uh, it, it happens to all the different uh, storage structures. We're actually optimizing the IOs before it gets to the disks. And uh, you'll see how we do that. So good question there. Thank you. Great. Thanks, GQ. So, folks, what is it we do? Again, we deliver the largest contiguous rights for more payload with every IO operation. We'll talk about our patented DRAM caching engine that again is OEM by nine of the 10 top PC manufacturers uh, and talk about the benefits that that can deliver to your environment, memory to memory transfer speeds. We are set it and forget it software. Excuse me, we've, uh, we patented the set it and forget it moniker years ago. We beat the Ronco chicken guy to that because we actually just sit in the background perform all of our optimization uh, activities, again, in the background without any intervention on your part. So truly amazing that this, this software can deliver so much without any effort on your part. And we'll show you what the dashboard looks like here. So we're gonna talk about our two patented filter drivers now, IntelliWrite and IntelliMemory. And I'm gonna turn it over to GQ to help in that regard. Thanks, Dan. And you know, before I talked about that I.O. tax and that when a file gets created or extended, the Windows file system doesn't know how big it's going to be, so it just finds the next allocation, which may not be big enough. Well, we're doing something very simple here. In the background, we're monitoring your system because every system's different. And we find out when a you know, certain files get created or certain applications when they create or extend files, how big it's going to be. And we feed that intelligence back to the file system. So the file system now, when it gets that creation or extension, it looks for the best allocation. And this is a logical allocation all on the Windows side. So when it writes it out, it can write it out in a nice single I.O. And, you know, just as a picture says here, rather than, let's say, 100 IOs to write out that piece of data, it's now a nice sequential IO. So, you know, we're, we're clearing up that network. But as I indicated before, with that nice sequential IO, you're also getting the optimal performance out of your storage, whether it's eight hard disk drives or SSDs. Uh, you'll get the optimal performance there. Great. And then uh, now what I talked about before was for the write IOs, but what about the read IOs? And this is where we have our caching technology. Now, what caching technology does is if a read comes in, if we can satisfy that right at the Windows operating system, well, we eliminate that read having going down the network and to the storage to get satisfied. So you can see we reduce the latency of getting that I.O. satisfied by X times. And you may think, well, my uh, my storage has caching. Well, or, you know, memory or RAM is 10 to 15 times faster than SSDs. So you can see how much faster we can do that. Plus, we eliminate 
all that network traffic, which means we just cleared up bandwidth for other people, other systems using that network, that storage. Now, caching is not really new, but we're very unique. And that's why Dan had indicated why nine out of the top 10 PC manufacturers license our technologies. And it's because of two reasons. One is how we use the RAM. You know, many caching products have you go and allocate some of your precious RAM for caching. We don't do that. We're going to just look and see what available RAM is on that system. And we'll use it when nobody else is using it for caching. And this is a read caching only. Now, if any user or system process needs it, we automatically give it back. So there's never any memory contention issues. So basically, as Dan may have indicated, we're a set it and forget it product. We'll just use what's available and not being used out there to give you these performance gains. The second thing that's very unique about us is how we determine what to put and keep in cash to get your optimal performance. Uh, many caching products uh, see a read come in and says, let me put that in cash and hope that it gets read again. Well, we take a little more heuristic approach. We're over time, we're looking at what data is getting read the most. So it's likely to get hit the most in cash. And that's one factor. Another factor is, we know what certain patterns of data are going to give more performance gains than others. So taking those two, in fact, two, two pieces of data and we factor it in to determine what to put and keep in cash to get the optimal performance. And that's why you see these 3X, 4X gains over other products. Uh, that's very unique about us, Dan. No, thanks, GQ. So uh, again, folks, uh, I hope you can see that there's, an, there's a significant uh, amount of activity going on, and yet you'll hardly ever see us in Task Manager because there's a, even a third patented uh, technology that GQ and his team have developed, and it's called Invisitasking. And we use, actually, we use idle CPU time to do all of our work. So not only are we using idle DRAM, it's just sitting there, feet up on the table, not doing anything to provide this significant benefit from a read uh, perspective. The read's never taking the trip to storage and back again. And we're doing all of this using idle CPU time. So we hardly even show up, if we do it all, on Task Manager. So, and again, all of this is done without any intervention on your part. A simple software solution that actually we install without a reboot and begin optimizing immediately. It couldn't be easier. Uh, and we look forward to getting that software in your hands and implementing that in your environment. I mentioned that, that uh, GQ and his team had developed a dashboard. Since we're running in the background, a lot of our customers said, hey, everything's running great, but what is it you guys are actually doing? So again, GQ and his team developed this dashboard to show you exactly what it is we're doing from a read and write IO uh, elimination perspective and what that means to you from a storage IO time saved. So GQ, you wanna chat briefly about this? Sure, Dan, and you know, as Dan says, a lot of people said, what are you doing for us? And a lot of people, they can, they take their benchmarks before so they see certain batch jobs running faster, less help calls coming in. But we developed this dashboard to give you some idea of what's happening. Like this one here, and it's showing in the last three weeks. And you can change it to since installed last week, uh, last 24 hours. But in this case, we've it says we've eliminated over 9 million IOs. Now, when I say eliminated, it's it's being eliminated from having to travel down to the storage to get satisfied. Because, uh, you know, with caching, we'll be able to satisfy it right there at the system. And with writes, rather than a whole bunch of small random IOs, we're doing it with a nice single IO. So we're 
eliminating those IOs, which is going to give you performance back. In this case, 64% of the read IOs and 32% of the write IOs were eliminating. But what does that mean for you? And that's why we put in this storage IO time. Because we're a filter driver, we know the latency times of the IOs to get completed. So we can calculate how much of the IOs time is being saved for you. Now this is different than absolute time because you have to remember that IOs can happen in parallel. You have user IOs, uh, system IOs, all occurring at the same time. So it's it's a it's uh, all this I/O time being saved from your system to give you the performance back. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, GQ. And there are more screens behind it. We won't uh, you know take your time today, but you'll you'll be able to see and use this uh, dashboard when you install the uh, the software that you get uh, from attending today's webinar. We also have a single pane of glass to view all of the VMs in your environment and what our software is doing for you. It's called the Velocity Management Console. And this is just a depiction of what that might could look like in your environment. Here on the left are all the VMs that were installed on and across the top at a high level, these are the different categories that we monitor on the Velocity Management Console. You saw previously, a little more detail as to what's going on. And up here, there are more dashboards in the background. But from a high level, you can see your whole environment. And what the system status is telling you is not that there's a problem with this VM from its operational standpoint, but I, I hope you gathered the importance uh, and the benefits you get from utilizing our patented caching engine. So the yellow identifies that there's limited memory for us to work with. If we had more, we could do a better job on this particular VM. The green are all running at optimal uh, environments. And the red is saying, hey, there's not enough memory, free memory here for us to even begin to build a cache. We know we could deliver benefits on this VM, but we really need more memory made available for us to use to build that cache and deliver that memory to memory transfer speeds and eliminate those read IOs from going to storage. On average, we need three or four gigabytes uh, of, of free and available memory uh, to begin building the cache. And of those three or four gigabytes, we actually keep one and a half gigabytes at least free and available. We don't even use it so that in case the OS needs that uh, needs memory, it's available for it to use or some other uh, application. And it is a dynamic cache. If the OS needs the memory that we're using, it automatically flushes itself and gives that memory back to the OS for it to use. Again, nothing for you to do, everything happening automatically in the background. So pretty easy to use great overview as to what's happening in your environment. Uh, and again, this is software that we would also help help you, you to install. And again, no reboot required to do any of this. Here are some examples of, of customers that have been had some significant benefits from using our software. And I'm, you can read these faster than I could talk, but let me just share Bell Mobility here. They're the Verizon of Canada. And look at this we reduced IO to their backend SAN by 61%. I said on average, we usually do 30. 61% here, and they got 3X faster SQL queries. Amazing. By just installing our software. ASL Marketing. We dropped their SQL batch imports by 15 hours. 15 hours. Again, nothing for anybody to do but install our software and Creative Office Pavilion. Response time for SQL and other applications, 90% faster. So pretty impressive what it is you know, we can accomplish for folks. Everybody's different, which is why you know, our best practice is to install us and see what you can derive from our patented IO reduction software. And also important to have some pre-installation benchmarks so you can measure the before and after. So 
how do you guarantee and get improved SQL performance? Well, we talked about having memory free and available. And SQL will utilize all of the memory that's, that is available unless you cap SQL at a certain percentage. So one is to make sure that you have DRAM available for us and or add more DRAM if possible. We talked about capping SQL. So SQL is like a kid in a candy store with a $20 bill. They'll just spend it all. Uh, they'll It'll use all the memory it can get. So you do need to make sure that there is a cap on SQL's max memory. And then take a look at the dashboard. And if you're not getting 30 to 50% of your IO traffic eliminated from having taken the trip to storage, try adding a little more memory and you can increment yourself up to the most efficient IO environment possible. GQ, any comments? GQ, you there? Oops, sorry, I hit the wrong button there, Dan, sorry. I think you hit it all, but I do want to stress the point on step two about capping SQL. And this is something that Francisco also had asked about too. He said, SQL Server engines like to keep a hold of memory without giving it back. It sounds like this product would not be useful for SQL Server engines. And half right there, Francisco. Uh, SQL is not very intelligent in using memory. The SQL servers, when it loads up, it will try to load all its databases into memory, even though many of those databases are parts of those databases aren't even getting accessed. So by limiting the amount of memory that SQL uses, giving us some, you're going to see that performance gains. In fact, we had an outside lab do a test. They ran a third-party benchmark on the product and then they limited the amount of SQL, uh, uh, how much memory SQL is using and gave us, I believe it was like four gigabytes there. And they saw a 62% increase in transaction rates. And that's because we're using it more efficiently and we're using it not just for SQL, but for the whole Windows operating system. And that's why we're seeing the performance gain. So just want to stress that point about SQL servers, Dan. Yeah, no, great, GQ. And you're right. It, it may seem, folks, a little counterintuitive that, oh, oh, if I, you know, take some memory away from SQL, then everything's going to go, you know, dog slow. And again, setting a tier zero storage environment in, in, your, in your VM by utilizing that idle DRAM and getting memory to memory transfer of data far outweighs uh, whatever you think you might be decremental by limiting that memory. Or again, just cap it where it is and add more memory so there's memory free for us to use. Again, SQL is a sweet spot for us. Seven out of our 10 new customers initially biased to improve uh, SQL performance. So how do I even realize what, you, what we've been talking about here today? Well, as I said, you're going to get a not for resale copy of a Velocity server license, not a host license. So just download and install it. Again, there's no reboot required. It installs in minutes. Uh, the longest time it takes is to download the software. Then it's a few mouse clicks and you're off and running. So let it run and then pull up the dashboard after a few days to see what you get. The other option, folks, is to connect with us and we're very happy to do this. And as I mentioned to you, the best practice is to install us on all the VMs on a particular host. And we are more than happy to give you enough software, enough host licenses to accomplish that and then see the benefits that you get. Uh, I had one construction company that attended the this webinar. They came back and said they wanted to install, they installed this on a SQL uh, server. They saw benefits. They said, hey, we want to put you on our seven hosts on all the VMs and see what you got, what we get, excuse me. And they saw significant performance improvements, IO reduction, et cetera, uh, and then installed us on all those VMs permanently. We had another hospital last week 
that installed this on 151 VMs. And folks, they installed this using the Velocity Management Console in less than five minutes on those 151 VMs. Really impressive. And that's on an uh, electronic medical records environment, you know, that's running in the hospital, boom, installed us, and we started optimizing immediately. So folks, it's, it's really easy and simple for you to, it, to take advantage of the software that we're sending to you. And we'd love to work with you, not only to get that installation completed, but also to work with you on getting us installed across as many VMs as possible in your environment. So GQ, I, we talked earlier about, you know, when we got a few questions that you took during the, the session, did we get any more questions out there from folks? We do, Dan, we got a good group here and keep Great. them coming. Uh, I want to do want to go back to Francisco and he, he asked, we run Windows VM on a Microsoft Azure. Is your product still applicable? Yes, it is. Uh, whether the Windows system is a physical system or a virtual system, it still runs into this Windows IO tax and that IO blender effect. Now, you know, the IO blender effect, I you know, the way you showed on the diagram, Dan, is up from the hypervisor, but that also happens with physical systems too. Think of uh, these physical systems all hitting uh, LUNs on the same SAN. That causes that same uh, blender effect. So yes, well, so we run both on uh, virtual systems and physical systems. And Francisco, you you may or may not have been with us at the beginning when we uh, when we when GQ and his team certified under this Microsoft SQL Server I/O reliability certification. It was actually done up in Azure. So with access to your VMs, whether on prem or in the cloud, uh, we can optimize and improve performance. And then, and then. Uh... Prashash asks, how do we increase our, how do we, do we need to increase our RAM capacity to utilize your software I.O.? And as, you know, we indicated before, uh, we will just use what's available, memory that is not being used at the time. Of course, we'll give it back if it's needed. But, of course, if there's no available memory on the system, you won't we won't take advantage of it to, for caching. So yes, if you, if there's not enough available on there, we do recommend adding some to take advantage of the caching. Of course, you always get advantage of all the other technology. And then from K Kayai, I'm sorry if I did not pronounce that correct, it says, how will this work in a SQL Server always on the environment? Works fine in those environments. And uh, if it has switch over, it, it does fine there. Uh, Augusto says, I don't know how smart your app is, but what happens if backups are running and it's reading all the files and logs? How does your app behave? Uh, well, when we're, as I indicated before, we're gonna see what day is getting hit the most. In a backup, that data is not getting, it's only getting read one time to get, you know, backed up. So that, it won't do much at all with that type of data because it's seeing that this data is not getting read again here. So uh, it behaves fine with that. Fact is, just to, a lot of people buy Disk Keeper and Velocity in order to increase their backup uh, performance because they've reached their backup window. You know, uh, it's it's going past the time they have to do the backup. So they put us on their system and we've got some good success stories, or Dan does, of people that reduce their backup windows with our product. Uh, let's see here. And then Michael says, uh, oh, this is a question for you, Dan, about licensing. Is this license per VM or per host? A great question, Michael. And and so it's it is it's either way actually. So we have a per server license, which is one that you'll be getting, uh, and we also have a host license. And and when we say host license, we don't install on the host. 
but the license covers all the VMs on a particular host. And break even is about seven VMs. So if you have less than seven, then a per server license is more cost effective and you just buy six uh, per server licenses. But if you have seven or more VMs on a particular host, then the host license is much more cost effective for you. And another benefit, by the way, too, and we don't really didn't mention this earlier, is a lot of times we can, we because of our IO reduction, we can help in actually increase the VM density on a particular host. And you may even need fewer hosts uh, in that environment. So I hope that's helped uh, around the licensing question. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate that. Sure. And then uh, see here, Mukesh asks, what type of credentials needed to connect to this? Uh, in order to uh, install it and then run, usually with admin priz there on that system, just because uh, we want somebody with the correct priz in order to run this, Mukesh. And then Henry asks, can you run on Azure Analysis Systems? Yes, works fine on those. Uh, as indicated before, as long as it's running Windows, that is what we can run on it. We're agnostic to everything else there. Now, Mukesh asks a good question there that we didn't address here. He says, we're using Oracle Database and connected to financials and procurement applications. So how does this benefit on people's soft environments? Very good question. You know, we've we, we've talked about or we focused on SQL because SQL here is a very IO intensive, but anything that is IO intensive, like the Oracle database, file servers, Outlook, exchange servers, anything that is very IO intensive, in fact, uh, domain controllers, we've, uh, they get hit off and enough like that. And web we'll, servers. And too. web servers will imp improve the performance on that. So Gee, if, I could just, if I could just mention too, so if that Oracle database is running on Windows, um, we, we, we have a number of customers, and again, everybody's different, uh, so I don't mean to, to make a broad general statement, but we have customers running, having Oracle on Windows, they install us and have seen dramatic, dramatic performance improvements, uh, again, because of the recaching uh, element of the software. University of Illinois installed us in an, in an Oracle environment, did some testing in an Oracle environment, brand new, all flash storage uh, was installed. And we actually reduced IOs to backend storage uh, by 300% and, and reduced runtime on a specific application from four hours down to an hour and a half. And that was on all brand new hardware and all flash storage. So thanks, GQ. Thanks, Dan. And you know what? I'm going to set you up here because Krishna asked a very good question here. Who can benefit? Is it the SQL Server team, the network team, the applications development team? to use this software? So again, it, since it really can benefit all. So SQL performance can be improved because we're reducing IO in the environment, the whole throughput and network team can benefit from it. And again, because we also improve and reduce IO across all Microsoft applications that as GQ mentioned, we benefit really everybody in the environment. And you're, you're completely right, Dan. On the network side, you, you can see that we decrease the amount of traffic that has go through the network to the storage. So we just increase that bandwidth. bandwidth. So the network team has got to be very happy about that. Yeah. Uh, Chris asks a good question. Does this product support REFS or just NTFS? And Chris, We've been getting more questions on REFS. We currently do not support it, but as we're seeing more and more uh, people actually using it, before it was just, you know, they're thinking about it, but now we're actually seeing people using it. So we're, we're taking a hard look at supporting that, but not yet. Uh, Depraj asks, will this work on Azure SQL Managed Instance? Yes, as long as, to Praj, as I indicated, as long as it's running Windows, we'll run on it. 
And then Doug asks, if we install on a server and migrate it to another host, will it still work on that host? Yes, because we're agnostic to the host. We're actually uh, running on that virtual machine. So no problem to that. Does it, uh, Chris asks, does it, does it support clustered shared volumes? And Chris, good questions. Uh, other technology does, but not the caching technology yet. So if it's on a clustered shared volume, uh, the caching technology will not support that yet. So good question on that. Uh, let's see here. Oh, here's a good question. What about the safety of this caching? What happens if the system goes, crashes or goes down? How safe is my data? Uh, we're a read-only caching. Data integrity is our number one uh, goal when we develop this product. So what that means by caching, read caching, is that the data that in, is in our cache is already on your storage. So if the system goes down and that cache gets removed, it's okay because that data is already on your storage, completely safe. And then, uh, oh, here's a good question. Where does this get installed? Does it get installed on the host or the VMs? This product gets installed on the actual virtual machines running Windows. And the reason for that is that's where the IOs are getting created by the application. So that's where we want to optimize it and right there where it's getting created. So it's on the VMs. Now, does it have to get installed on all the VMs on the host? No, it's not required. You can just put on the ones that are getting hit the most, the, the, the most IO active systems. But as indicated before, we've seen best performance if you installed on all the VMs on the host. And the reason why is that even though you optimize one, you still have the other ones causing uh, performance issues on that same network. And by putting on all of them, you'll get the optimal performance. And I see Steve says, do you have any examples or cost savings of using the software in Azure instances? And Dan, I, you probably do have some out there. Uh, yep. So GQ and, and thanks. So what so what our customer customers have experienced is because of our ability to reduce IO traffic and improve performance, uh, they're able to actually utilize a lower cost tier of Azure or cloud storage and actually pay for the software and save money at the same time. So it's really uh, in, in, in those cases, uh, again, as we, our best practice is for folks to install us in their environment because everybody's different uh, and see see the, the benefits you receive and then make those specific decisions as to how you can best utilize the software and the resulting cost savings that you could also realize by reducing that cost of Azure storage. Thanks, Dan. I'm just looking to see if anything else that we missed here. We, we got some good questions here from this Great group. Great questions. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it. I think we've hit it all. Super. Well, GQ, thanks. And thanks for, for your support here uh, on the webinar. And folks, thanks for your, your, your great questions. Thanks for your attendance. And again, look for uh, an email from us with a, a download link to, to get your uh, Velocity server license and install it. Uh, and also, excuse me, as I've mentioned, if, if you would like, we are more than happy and willing to work with you to not only maximize the performance benefits you get in your SQL environment, but also across all of your other Microsoft applications because it works across them all and delivers and can deliver significant IO reduction and application performance improvements, throughput improvements, et cetera, in your environment. And nothing better than to work with folks and have them realize those types of benefits. So thanks again, GQ, for your time and help today, folks. Thanks for your attendance. 
please reach out to us with any questions. No question is a bad one, and we look forward to working with you in the future. And we wish you all a very happy and healthy holiday season and, and look forward to a great new year. So thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone.